Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Grids. In this module, we will learn about the Grid Manager and how to create custom grids for the PCB. We have used the grids in prior modules for placement in the schematics and in PCB planning. Now we will introduce the Grid Manager really for PCB component placement. The Grid Manager is located midway on the Properties panel when nothing is selected in the PCB. Here we see the default grid entry. You can customize a number of things, including the line colors. To change the colors, click on the color square and pick another color. Double-clicking on the default entry opens up the grid editor. Here we can change the fine or coarse graphics by clicking on the pull-downs and selecting a different graphic. The line multiplier can be set as well and represents how often the coarse graphics show up relative to the fine. There are three options, 2, 5, or 10. I prefer the 5x multiplier, but that's a personal preference. In addition, we can modify the steps. Let's enter the grid settings for the X, set it at 20 mils. Now, by default, they would be both 20 mils for the X and the Y. If you break the chain between them, you can now enter a different value for Y. Hitting Apply updates the PCB view. Here we show an example of differing X and Y grids being used for the placement of two rows of LEDs. We want the LEDs spaced 500 mil apart in the x-axis, and in the rows we want them separated by 1000 mil. So having x be set to 500 mil and y to 1000 mil would make sense. We can add more grids to the PCB by using the Add pull-down menu. There are options for adding Cartesian as well as polar grids. Let's add one of each. Clicking on the Cartesian option adds a new entry to the Grid Manager window. This is inserted at a higher priority, a priority of 1 in fact, and would take precedence over any lower grid. Double clicking on the new entry opens up the editor window where we can edit the grid's name, pick a color for the grid, note that setting the fine to one color, we can now pick a lighter or darker color for the course. The grid units used can be set for this grid. We could rotate the grid on the PCB, say by 50 degrees, and we can then set up the desired XY grid steps. Looking further, the origin of this grid can, can be entered manually using the XY coordinates. Again, that would make sense if you had set the origin of the PCB properly, or you can use the mouse and use the Set Origin on PCB option. Clicking the Apply button updates the PCB with the new grid. Now let's use the set origin and PCB view, and with the mouse, we click on the new origin for the grid. We will place it centered on component D4. Hitting apply and moving the editor window out of the way, we see the grid has moved. The quadrant section allows us to create the grid in one or more of the four quadrants, as you can see. We can also change the rotation back to zero as well. The grids are easily configured and reconfigured as needed. Note the additional attributes that can be configured, the extents, both width and height of the size of one quadrant. These can be set by entering the numbers directly or by using the mouse in the PCB view. This new grid that we've added has the highest priority one, and again it would be overlaid upon the default grid whose priority is 50. Now adding a polar grid follows much the same process but with understandably different options. We can set both the angular and radial step, the starting and ending angle of the radio min and max range for the grid, and like the other grid, we can set its origin as well. Now with two grids added, let's start moving components. Did you notice that when we started move D5, both of the added grids disappeared? Why is that? Well, both of them were not enabled for component placement. This has caused confusion in the past. The non-component and component checkboxes, if not checked, the associated grid is not active for those objects. To illustrate, let's check the polar grid's component box, but leave the my grid unchecked. Now when we move D5, the polar grid remains active. The my grid is not. As you can see, the component snaps to the polar grid aligning to it. Tapping the spacebar while moving the component rotates at 90 degrees relative to the polar grid. Checking the My Grid component allows us now to use that grid for placement as well. 
Opening up the My Grid Editor window, we can modify the extents. Just like with the default grid, clicking on the chain allows the extents to have different values for height and width. Let's expand the grids to ensure that they overlap to illustrate grid priority. A grid's priority can be changed by clicking on its priority number and then using the menu options that pop up. Lowering the polar grid to 2 raises my grid to 1, and now it covers the polar grid, as you can see. We can, in fact, get rid of additional grids if we want to. To delete a grid, select it and then click on the trash can, and then answer yes when the question comes up. I normally use the default grid when placing opponents and routing, changing it as needed to make things easier for me. We will relook at this when we start component placement in a future module. This concludes Module 18 PCB Grids, where we introduced the Grid Manager and added Polar and Cartesian grids for use in PCB placement. Please do Exercise 18.